So we'll start recording. Welcome to Rooted. Glad to have you all here with us tonight. Yeah, go ahead and keep introducing yourselves in the chat. We have some alum and staff. Megan, I also forgot your computer science. Okay. Any other computer science majors out there? Identify yourselves. <laughs> Glad to have you here with us. Hey, Liam, good to see you. Welcome once again to our Rooted Deeply evening. We're here uh, gathering every Monday together. We invite guests to join us. Um, our guests are a combination of some are university staff, some are recent alum, some are folks who are just working in the, the work of justice in their lives. Um, and we're gathering here because we want to pursue justice in our lives, following in the ways of Jesus. Um, we want the world around us to like to look more like what we know God's kingdom and understand God's kingdom to be. A lot of us pray regularly, um, the Our Father, and uh, and pray for God's kingdom to come here on earth as it is in heaven. Um, so throughout the week, we have small groups gathering where we're studying the life of Jesus and learning about how Jesus defined God's kingdom. And in those groups, we're also being invited to look closely at the spaces that influence us the most. Um, our families and our, our local cities and our neighborhoods and our campuses. But in this space each week, we're learning to practice disciplines that will give us a foundation and a strength so that we can keep doing the work of justice that God is inviting us into and seeking to be a part of God's kingdom come. Um, because it's good work, but it's also hard work and it's challenging work. And who we are, not just what we do, really matters. Um, so that's what we're focusing on while we're here together on Mondays. Um, and each week while we're here on this Zoom call, we get to listen in to a conversation um, and invited to participate as well. There's chances to, to post in the chat or to unmute and ask your questions. And then after we listen in on the conversation, ask our questions, have some dialogue back and forth, um, we'll have this new spiritual practice, kind of a challenge each week. Um, and so by the end of our time together this summer, we'll have tool boxes that are filled with different spiritual disciplines for us to keep trying and implementing and working together. So last week, we had two alum, Leslie and Gabe. Uh, they shared with us about um, having a deeply rooted friendship. And this discipline, um, these two disciplines that can feel at odds with each other, right? We're called to have community and deep friendship where we're known. And we're also called to solitude and being alone with God. And how do we, how do we balance those two things that could be opposing, but are both necessary? Um, and then we were challenged this week to go and, um, and ask someone to be our friend <laughs> and to start building a rooted friendship. And that's not just like, hey, will you play video games with me? It's like a friendship where we're, we're gonna be asking each other questions and having some good um, dialogue and care for each other. So um, go ahead and type in the chat and just share like, did you find a friend? How did it go? Uh, Leslie and Gabe shared their story and um, they were pretty upfront. Gabe was pretty upfront about how awkward Leslie was when he was like, hey, do you want to be my friend? I want to be your friend. <laughs> um, but it, it worked out. Gabe did want to be his friend. Um, and they've built this really deep and beautiful friendship. So share in the chat about how it went. Were there any awkward moments? Um, last week, I shared with you all that I was had been planning to just ask my husband to be my friend. Because, um, you know, like there's no rejection. He has to say yes. I hope. Uh, but then I felt challenged, like, no, I, I'm going to ask someone else that I actually, we actually like have to do some more work. Um, so I, I asked two people um, and one was really easy. Like we had wanted to get together. And so I just was able to text and be like, hey, can we hang out? So we're hanging out on Wednesday. But then yesterday I was like, you know, last Monday when I said I was going to ask somebody, I really had this friend Esther in mind. And um but we haven't like been in touch as much because of COVID. And so she actually had reached out to me about something and I was like, okay, I could like just give her the answer to her question. Or I could say like, do you wanna 
hang out. And I felt super awkward as I was texting her. I, I almost texted um, like, I want to be your friend. <laughs> I didn't. I probably just should have. But I said, hey, like, can we have some friend time uh, in the near future? And I, so that was yesterday. And then um, she didn't message me back. And I was like, oh, gosh, she doesn't want to be my friend. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Um, which that might be true whether or not she wants to be my friend. But um, and then this morning she messaged back and said she had just come back from a week away and would love to get together um, in the next week or so. So I feel like well challenged by it and I'll have to report back. No one is messaging in the chat about your rooted friendship. So I don't know if that means like y'all didn't do it or you're just being, which might have happened, right? Like the weeks get busy and you forget. So you can like get your phone out and text your friend or your would-be friend or maybe friend uh, and ask if they want to be your friend or have friend time if you want to um, borrow my language. All right, Nick and Emma found friends. Was it, were it, is it just you two? Or <laughs> did you like turn to each other and say, will you be my friend? Um, hopefully not. I think when you said that you found friends, you mean maybe you found some other people. Congratulations. You know, it's funny how um, even that, right? You haven't even gotten to like the vulnerable, like here's my whole story and here's like all about who I am. And it still feels like it pushes our buttons of feeling really vulnerable and exposed. Um, and I think that when we open ourselves to that kind of vulnerability and honesty, because, you know, we do actually want deep friendships, right? That's something we're created for. Um, God meets us in those places. And that's where tr transformative work happens. And that's a lot of what we're talking about this summer. Um, yeah, all right, Josh, I'm glad that you guys had a good conversation and set up some plans to keep checking in. Um, and, and it might feel awkward when you like have that first check-in, like you planned it, you knew it was coming, but then one of you has to be like, so let's do our check-in. Um, yeah, okay, so it sounds like we still have to keep asking each other and kind of pushing for some of that accountability with one another to even um, get those friendships. Yeah, yeah, all right, Sydney, I'm glad you were able to spend time with someone new. Way to go. So what would be great is if you have a, a friend or a would-be friend who's on these calls, that's someone you could invite into having these conversations. Um, because each week as we're listening in um, and inviting guests to join us, there'll be stuff to debrief out of that. There's, there's gonna be challenges and ways that each conversation um, is an invitation to us personally and uniquely to connect with God. Um, so tonight we get to listen in on a conversation with uh, Captain Ryan, who's not here with us in person tonight, um, but it's he and his friend Colleen. Um, they're both also my friends, so I'm happy to kind of um, look into their conversation. They recorded it for us, so we'll be, we'll be watching it pre-recorded, and then we'll get to talk about it afterwards. Um, and while I'm sad they're not here live, I'm also grateful that we kind of get to like watch it together and then talk about it. Um, Captain and Colleen have been friends since college. They're both alum of University of Delaware. And if you listen closely, you'll hear Captain actually say golly at least once on the call. <laughs> uh, they share some big ideas, but also the ways that those ideas and practices hit them in really personal ways. Um, and one of the things they both talk about is uh, how um, the, the disciplines we're talking about tonight, which are ambition and humility, how it plays out in their families, uh, which is really relevant because a lot of us are either with our families, well, have been with our families maybe more this past year than ever before we have been in a long time or in the summer or with them or visiting with them. Um, so it feels relevant. And uh, at this very moment, uh, our dear Captain Ryan is actually with his family. So he'll talk a little bit about that and you can kind of take a moment and, and hold him up in prayer as he's hopefully practicing some of the stuff that Colleen teaches him in this conversation. So um, thank you guys for continuing to share ways that you're connecting with friends. I am gonna um, turn us over to our video. Good evening, Colleen. It's good to be with you tonight. Yeah, same um, with you. Yeah, Colleen, let's see. Our relationship goes way back, huh? Back to uh, undergrad years at University of Delaware. 
Mm-hmm. Um, my golly, I still remember I was an RA in a freshman <laughs> dorm <laughs> and you were on the volleyball team. And so volleyball was there early. RAs were there early. And I think your, your whole team had like one of the whole floors in Rodney complex. Yes. I remember being very happy seeing a friendly face because preseason is not fun. So it was yeah. fun to- And we had, we had briefly met before then, like the year before or something, or was that your I think I was a sophomore that year. So I maybe met you through university my freshman year and you're one of the older cool kids. Yeah, I was only a year ahead of you, I believe, right? I think I was a junior. Yeah, one or, one or two, like, I don't remember. Nice but. Wait, yeah. one. I'm, o, I'm 08, aren't you 06? 06, okay, so two years. Yeah. So we're two mm-hmm. years apart. I guess I was a senior that year and you were a sophomore. Yeah. Oh, very fun. Well, um, Colleen, I'm wondering, um, I wonder if you could just share a little bit of who you are. What is it that makes you you um, today? Yeah, yeah. So Colleen Kasky, formerly Walsh, when we when you met me, um, married to Greg Kasky, who I met at the University of Delaware uh, in our athletes and varsity chapter there. Um, and when I graduated, I came on staff with InterVarsity to work specifically with athletes and worked at Delaware for a few years. And now I oversee the region with athlete work. So any campus that has athlete work happening, I'm kind of the consultant that will come in and, and help that. I run an athlete conference. So that's been a fun, fun thing to do with my life to get to be on staff working with athletes. Like you said, I was an athlete in college and university was huge for my growth. And I'm really just even keeping me on the team. It was being a college athlete's really difficult. And so to have a faith community of other athletes who are seeking, what does it mean to be a Christian and an athlete and follow God was really helpful to me. Um, I was able to start a Bible study for my teammates and see people come to faith. And so anyways, it was uh, very motivating to want to do that for my job. So now we live in Washington, D.C. area. My husband goes to George Mason. He's getting his PhD in economics. And um, yeah, we actually, we live with one of our college friends who was also, he was a tennis player at Delaware. Greg was a baseball player. I was a volleyball player. So uh, it's fun to to still have that community. And um, yeah, that's, that's a little about me. Oh, that's great. So fun. Well, so today we're talking about humility and ambition um, as spiritual disciplines. So yeah, Colleen, how would you, how would you kind of define like, what is humility? What is ambition and what are they, what, what are they as spiritual disciplines? Hmm. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Cause when you say both of those, they seem like they might be opposite or something like that. Um, I mean, I think maybe a worldly sense of ambition is just like someone who's a go-getter kind of I think there's like can be maybe a selfish aspect to it um kind of self-centered like go after to make money be successful have power and influence um when I think about it as from a from a Christian sense I think ambition can be deeply rooted in what God has for you what, what his plan is for you and how you are responding in obedience to that and going after the the path that God has set before you. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I think humility is then really important too, because ambition then is actually not about you. It's about following God. It's about following your Lord. And so humility is saying, um, I'm not going to put myself first. I'm going to put God and, and usually ambition with the Lord means it's going to be others focused. And so put others first. Um, and so there's a real kind of setting aside of self, um, valuing other people as more important than you, um, that comes with that humility. Um, so yeah, that's some, some first thoughts, I guess. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, what you're saying there makes me think about that verse in Philippians. Um, it says, uh, you know, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that relates in what you were saying, like, you know, this ambition, like, could be uh, like your own selfish desires or goals, 
but mm-hmm. when it's paired with sort of God's desires and God's goals and hopes and dreams for your life, then it's sort of more of a, a biblical ambition or a, a Christian ambition, right? Like, um, yeah. and then that's wrapped up in humility and caring and loving for others, um, yeah. and others before yourself. Um, yeah. As you're saying that, it actually reminds me of volleyball. I talked a little bit about my team and starting a team Bible study. And I think my freshman year as a volleyball player, it was all about trying to survive, trying to get playing time, trying to impress my coach. Um, I think there was a lot of self-centeredness in that. You know, I came from high school. I was, you know, a great player in high school, got to college, kind of got knocked down a little bit, knocked off my high horse. Um, and so sports teaches you, if you want to be great, you got to get a lot of playing time, be a starter, you know, be a player of the week, you know, get, win awards and things like that. And so I really went after that my freshman year and, and I saw some success, you know, I did get to play as a freshman, but I was very um, unhappy. I wanted to transfer. I wanted to quit, um, which from the outside it didn't make sense. Cause I, I was doing, you know, I got to college, I was playing division one volleyball. Um, but it was when I got involved with InterVarsity and meeting other Christian athletes um, and just InterVarsity community, you know, that you were part of Ryan, um, that I started to say, oh, what would it look like to ask God what his what his priority is for me here? And I started to turn my attention like outward towards my teammates. Um, so realizing, okay, what if God's purpose for me on this team is more than just to like score points and win games, but it's actually to love and serve my teammates. Um, and so with that, I got the idea of starting a Bible study for my teammates and really started realizing they're just as stressed and you know, um, hurt and kind of, uh, broken as, as I felt. And when I created a spot for us to like come together and, and share that with one another, uh, that's when real, like just connection on my team opened up. Um, and so the interesting thing is I felt like once I started shifting my focus more towards my teammates and what, what, like, God, what do you want for me? Um, I started playing the best volleyball of my life, which was really interesting. And I think it's because I took my focus off me. Um, I had freedom and said, God, I'm here to do what you want and just started playing really well. Um, And our team ended up winning our conference championship my senior year. Um, But anyways, just as you were talking, I just was realizing, I think that was the experience that I had on my teammates when I shifted the focus to others and off selfish ambition. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's talk more about that shiftingness of um, shifting from, I don't know, like a selfish ambition to focusing on others and like, how, how can we, yeah, how can we do that? How do we, how do we bring ourselves into spaces and understandings where, yeah, I guess we're beginning to analyze like who we are and what we're after and what we're living for to, so that we can become humble and have a, right view of ambition, right? Does that that make sense? Like how do we, what, how does that shift take place? How do we do that? Yeah. Yeah. One thing that we've been doing a lot with athletes in our varsity and in um, our church community with my husband and my roommate, um, we talk a lot about checking in with our emotions and um, what it is, is simply like a tool that you do as, as close to daily as possible, where you share one emotion with each other that you're currently feeling and, and why you're feeling that emotion and you know people's response back to you they can't question it or or challenge you or try to fix you in it they just are supposed to receive it um and kind of you know be glad to be with you in whatever emotion that you're feeling and what i found is that when a community can practice that together where everyone comes and shares shares how they're feeling and they're being honest there's a real bond and and connection that happens um and regularly it'll happen where people say oh, wow, I didn't know I was the only one, or I thought I was the only one who was feeling this way. And now I'm realizing other people are feeling what I'm feeling, or there's a, there's a connection, like a heart level connection that can happen that I know for me, like, it's great to be able to share my own emotion, but then it's like a community focus when everyone's sharing their emotion. And it's like, okay, I'm not alone in this, like, and this community is with me and I'm with them. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting you're saying that. I was just thinking about like checking in with my own emotions and even just recognizing that like 
my emotions have a deep effect on how I live and how I act. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm thinking about my relationship with my father. Now I have a great relationship with my father, but occasionally he's able to say things um, that I don't know what well, you could say, like are politically incorrect or just not very nice. Um, and that like inside of me flips like this emotional switch. And I just kind of like get really mad. And then I come at him like with something also not so nice or the extreme opposite of whatever he was just saying. Um, and then our conversation from there just goes, I don't know, louder and more aggressive <laughs> and really goes nowhere till you know, my mom or my brothers or something have to break up the conversation, say, let's mm-hmm. move on. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That yeah. Is getting me thinking about what you're saying, like emotions and like, so how this emotional check-in, like how does that, yeah. How does that relate to humility and ambition? Yeah. Well, I think what, you know, your example is a great one. So I think when we are out of touch with our emotions, um, or we're not emotionally healthy, we're not kind of aware of what's going on inside of us. Um, we have responses that are emotional responses, but we're not aware that those are triggered by what's going on, yeah. like relationally, emotionally inside of us. And so what I've found is that when like, like checking in with your emotions is actually a skill to be developed. It's not like some people think, oh, I'm good and and I'm not good. Or sometimes it can be gender stereotype. Like women like their emotions and right. men are not in touch with their emotions. I don't think that's true. I think it's something that people can develop and work at. So when a community together becomes more proficient in identifying what emotion's going on and then checking in with that emotion with one another, um, that's actually where emotional maturity comes in. And um, I think like, you know, for example, like with your dad, or I've had times where as I've grown in my emotional maturity, I'm quicker to check what's going on inside of me, (laughs) say, okay, this person, I have this emotional reaction to what's going on in front of me right now. But even in that moment, then I might like check in with God and say, okay, God, that made me angry. I'm having this conversation, like help me right now. It it could be as simple as like, I don't want my emotions to spill out into a negative or sinful way and what's going on around me. I'm naming it, I'm bringing it to the Lord um, and then having him direct your next steps, right? And so I think that there is a humility in that to say, God, I need your help. Like this is going on inside of me. I need your help. I want to respond in a loving way to my dad or my coach or, you know, community, whatever's going on. Yeah, that's right. For me, like, I realized, like, when I sort of flip like that, my responses are never out of humility. Uh, it, it's like I have zero grace then, you know. It's like yeah. um, I can't be patient, I, you know. So, um, yeah. And I think also what happens is in that moment, you actually become cut off from the Lord. And so what I've noticed is as I'm growing in my own emotional maturity, um, it, it allows me to become more spiritually mature because as I'm in touch with what's going on inside of me, <laughs> I'm connecting with the Lord around that. Um, then he is a God of grace and love. And so then when we're, you know, we're humbly saying, okay, God, what do you want me to do? He's always going to lead us in love. Um, but when we're disconnected from what's going on, like we don't even have that opportunity to connect with God because like our brains are kind of cut off relationally when we're out of touch with that. Like something we talk about is like relational circuits, like your relational circuits can actually shut down and then you're not able to respond in love and grace to other people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is bringing up a couple of thoughts for me. You were, you're talking about like spiritual maturity and emotional maturity and how they're sort of connected. Um, But also I'd love for you to speak to me. Like, what could I do with my father to, yeah, I don't know, help me be in check with myself? I mean, it'd be great if your dad wanted to do an emotional check-in with you. <laughs> Sometimes that's that's a big ask. Um, I think, um, you know, I know you're married. Um, Jasmine's your wife. And so I wonder what it would be like to be regularly practicing the emotional check-in with her, especially when you're preparing to see your dad, when you're with your dad, 
um, and how naming your emotion to her and then using that as an opportunity to say, okay, God, like, this is, this is honestly what's going on inside of me right now. Like I, I need your help. Um, because I think when we're relational with one another, when we're relational with God and emotions is, is part of that, then we can actually hear clearly from more clearly from him of what, what obedience looks like. Like, like maybe God would say, go leave the room. Or maybe he would say, here's a loving response to your dad. Um, but there's, there's some way of, when you're emotionally connected to the Lord like that. And I think it would, would start with also your emotional connection to a human like Jasmine, um, that, that you're able to, to like listen and obey and respond in obedience. Um, and, and then what it does is it, it takes it off your dad, right? It's actually not about your dad, that your dad and your dad's relationship with God is, is their own thing. You can't be in control of that, but what you can be in control of is yourself. Um, and, what this does is it just allows an honesty in your relationship with the Lord that I think for me, I wasn't able to have before because I just thought I was supposed to say and do the right things. And then somehow that would please the Lord rather than actually have a relationship with God and that he knows what's going on inside of you, you know? Yeah. So you're, you're just talking about, and we were, we were talking about this last week, but thinking about friendships and what does it mean to sort of take friendships to the next level um, you're sort of saying like, it's good to have a, a friend, a close friend that you can sort of check in with, um, an emotional check in, right. To, and you're saying in a way that would help, help me like sort of ground myself either before or during a conversation with my dad or before I'm going to see him. Um, yeah. So you're saying there's something there in like that friendship space that helps me to then be more emotionally in check in the moment and have a deeper relationship with God through that. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, I think, you know, we, we talk about the church, I think at a, at a very basic level, like practicing that kind of relational connection with one other person is almost like a micro unit of what it looks like to be the church together. Um, so, you know, for college students listening to this, you know, you have, like you pray and ask God, like who could be one person that I could kind of have this emotional, emotional check-in with. Um, I think a lot of times it's, if you're married, I think, uh, um, you know, marriage, a marriage partner can be um, a good, a good person. But when you're in college, just like a, a really good friend, maybe in your small group or something like that, um, that when you're connecting regularly with them in that way, then it also is allowing them to speak into what's going on with, with your family or whatever situation that you're facing. Um, but what it does, like I was talking about before, is it opens up those relational circuits to then together, you guys can actually connect with the Lord in a relational way. Um, so I think there's another part to the question, but I don't know, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it seems like even what you're naming is sort of a, sort of a pre-step to being able to be, to have humility and ambition, right? Like that I need to be sort of in tune with myself and my relationship with God and my close friendships is what helps me to be in check mm -hmm. so that I can then be more humble and ambitious in the proper ways and respectful yeah. ways. And, yeah. Well, and I guess I would say, I think that it then actually just naturally produces humility Okay. and the, the fruit of it would be humility and then an ambition where, I mean, what if, what if ambition in this sense is that like you um, just so lovingly pursue your dad in a way that you haven't been able to before, but mm -hmm. because that is just flowing out of your own maturity you know, with the Lord and, and Jasmine or your friend, um, that, that like God's ambition for you is to just love your dad so well in ways that you haven't been able to before. Um, and who knows how God could use that in your dad's life, for example, since we're using that example, right. but then that's not really, you know, that's not in your control. You're just responding in obedience, um, going after something that might be really crazy to the outside world to say, how can you love your dad when he says those things or, you know, and you're just able, you have this ability, natural ability to pursue him in love in a way that 
you wouldn't before. Yeah. So currently I say like, I think my ambition is like, oh, I really wish that he would understand what life is like in Philadelphia and what it's like being in an interracial relationship. Um, but rather than that, maybe flip it to like, well, what, what would it be like what, to have my ambition be like deeply loving my dad? Um, yeah, just deeply loving him no matter what. Yeah. I mean, and that sounds like God, but I think even what I'm saying is you actually let the Lord set that ambition. Um, and it might look different from time to time, you know, um, one visit, it might be God's really saying, bring this article and challenge him and read it together. I mean, I don't know. And then the next time it's like, don't talk about anything, just love him and ask him about his work or, you know, whatever it is. Um, I mean, I think love always will be the response, but I think that, um, that when we're, we're growing in this way, like we're just totally leaning into the Lord and saying like, what do you have for me? What does obedience look like? in every part of my life, you know, in my relationship with my dad. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So would you say there are some like, like not being in check with myself and having sort of um, a lack of understanding of my emotions, does that have a negative effect on my humility and ambition or could it? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think, I think when we're out of check with what's going on inside of us and and God created us as emotional beings. um, I think, I think a message I got early on maybe in my faith was like, read your Bible, grow in knowledge, and that will produce correct living. That'll produce godly living. Um, And the more well, one, I just realized that wasn't true for me. <laughs> I would read my Bible and then still do things. And I'm like, why did I respond that way? Why did I get mad? Why, you know, yeah. like I'm reading my Bible. Shouldn't that be resulting in a transformed life of godliness? Um, and so I think that that's actually a false teaching that we've we've received. Um, so yeah. when when we're out of touch with what's going on inside of us, um, it, it just becomes really hard to, I mean, we, we can try to like have our knowledge drive us and like, okay, I know what I need to do. Like I remember one time when I was younger, I was like, I'm going to go today and I'm just going to not sin all day. Like I'm going to be a good person. I was raised Catholic. So this is probably coming from some of my Catholic um, upbringing, which I appreciated, but like, I'm just going to be good. And I just, I couldn't, like, I still would get angry. I still would you know, have sinful thoughts or hateful thoughts towards people. Um, and I get really frustrated with myself. And now what, what this emotional attunement, you know, attunement is, is helping me to see is that I can just like bring all that to the Lord and he knows what's going on. And then he wants to work with me to transform me. Um, and through, through that, then fruit of the spirit will be a natural response. Um, humility and ambition, godly ambition following what God says will be the natural overflow. Um, and then when you fall short, you talk to God about it and say, Oh, that I messed up there again, God, like, right. I'm angry at my dad again or whatever. And God's just with you in it. And and Jasmine is with you in it as your, as your kind of partner um, or whoever your friend is that you're connected to. Yeah. Well, that seems very, seems very rooting in a way, like trying to be grounded um, as a person. I, I've heard people talk about like how sometimes your knowledge can sort of outgrow your character. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, that just seems to be like in a way running around uncontrollably. Um, at least for me, it just be like, oh, yelling at my dad about this and that and that, you know, like, mm-hmm. um because yeah, but maybe you read all the good books and you've right. read oh, the Bible all the time, but it's not in check with. Yeah. He just doesn't understand, you know, and like even when mm-hmm. I've tried to like help people understand, it still doesn't shape, you know, their, it sometimes doesn't shape their thoughts at all. Um, yeah. just, you know, so I don't mm-hmm. know if that's like different emotions that are sort of controlling different people's thoughts, you know, even your sort of your knowledge intake being affected by your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, I think um, what, what we're talking about here is in a lot of ways, it's like taking the focus off yourself 
But then at the same time, it's acknowledging I can, I'm only in control of myself too. Right. And so um, I'm, I'm focused on others. I'm responding in obedience to God, but I know that I can only do this for myself and I can't control what other people think, say, believe, react. Um, I can invite them into this kind of relationship with me and with the Lord. Um, but so it's like others focus while also having humility to know that you can only change yourself, you know, and, and that has to be in your relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, that's deep. I, I like that. I think that's helpful. Like I can only control myself and I have to be in tune with myself in order to control myself. And then out of that is going to come my reactions to things, my humility, my ambition, basically other spiritual disciplines, other fruits of the spirit are going to sort of flow out of me being grounded in who I am and what my emotions are telling me in that moment, in that day, in that mm-hmm. time period. And yeah. it seems like it's a very great idea to have uh, some close friendships to be in community with, to sort of bounce those things back off of like, Hey, I'm feeling this way. How are you feeling today? And, um, yep. mm-hmm. Sort of like a, a springboard or, or someone to just be in check with. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it, it has to start with practicing it with a human, <laughs> um, practicing it with someone in your community. And that very easily will then open up being able to have those kind of conversations with the Lord. Um, but I've just found it's hard to sit down and be honest with God if I haven't first been honest with myself. And so getting that practice of checking in daily with someone else um, just kind of builds up those skills and that that capacity to, to be honest with what's going on so that you can bring that to the Lord. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Well, Colleen, this was a very fun conversation. Um, I'm excited. Um, to see where this goes for me um, as I work on this throughout the summer. I'm going to be hanging out with my father uh, for a couple weeks this summer. So it will be great to figure out how I can keep myself in check. <laughs> yeah. And, and, so, and that the Lord loves you and he loves your dad and, you know, he's, he's in control of that. Um, yeah. So I'll be excited to hear how that goes. And I can use the same, same things as I approach time with my family as well. So this is good for me too. Yeah. Amen. Cool. Well, can I say a quick prayer for you? Yeah. Great. Well, God, thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you for the work she's doing. Thank you for her relationships that she has in her life, in her church community and her family. Um, God, I just thank you for the ways in which you've helped her to continue to check in with her emotions and grow in that and understand who she is and who you've made her to be. And, um, yeah, just pray for all of us as we explore um, and, you know, find our friend to be in check with and, and um, yeah, understanding who we are and how that shapes us. Would that, would that drive us um, into all different aspects of life, especially into humility and ambition, um, starting with um, knowing ourselves and looking to God. So we pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Colleen and Captain Ryan for uh, their vulnerability in sharing their very honest, real story and their journeys. Um, thank you also folks posting in the chat and sharing about like how this is hitting you, right? So they're not here with us tonight to do our Q&A, um, but I do think that like question asking is a really good practice for us anyway, right? It helps us kind of pick apart like what are we, what's sticking with us from what we just heard? What do we still want or need to learn? So I'm going to invite you now to just post in the chat like what questions are lingering with you or what thoughts, like where do you want to go with this? What what do you want to, um, what's hitting you and, uh, and then what's coming up for you? If they were here, what would you ask them? Uh, I mean, Captain will be back with us next week, but, and, and Colleen might be able to join us one week. So this isn't just like an exercise, right? Um, and there might be some things that, that we want to actually like give a few minutes to talk about all together. Um, so as you guys are thinking about what questions you have or kind of what follow-up comments you want to make in, in the chat, um, go ahead and start doing that. Um, I just feel like, man, 
some of what they said, it sounds so simple, right? But so powerful. And we know that emotional health and emotional maturity is just hard because we don't see a ton of it around us. Um, and I feel like, you know, Colleen is not a therapist, <laughs> but yet I feel like we were getting a little bit of like some good, very personal um, insight and learning. So um, yeah, so Kate's asking, what's the place of discipline in what we're talking about? Um, yeah, following, she, Colleen talked about like the trying to like discipline herself to like not sin or to just kind of gain all this intellectual knowledge of scripture. Um, and what does it mean to have kind of a, a different perspective of the work that Jesus is doing even within us? Yeah, where can we find grace for where we are? as you guys are continuing to, to post kind of your thoughts and questions, a few things that stuck out to me, especially um, on, on that note of what Kate just shared was just the comment of like knowledge, the, the um, I'm not sure the exact way that Colleen said it, but that idea of knowledge and character. And um, yeah, you can like gain all of this knowledge, but if it's not shaping and forming your character, what what is it? <laughs> what is it good for? Um, Jesus had a lot to say, and um, you guys will probably be discovering and digging into that in the Bible studies. Jesus had a lot to say to people who acquired lots of religious knowledge, but didn't let that knowledge shape their character. Um, we can't do any kind of justice work if we're not letting our character be deeply shaped by what we're learning of Jesus. Um, I also loved how um, Colleen and Captain were talking about being focused on others, right? Like responding to God, uh, focusing on others, but also recognizing that we're only in control of ourselves. Dang, that one like got me. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if I could like control other people? And um, I was really relating to them as they shared about walking into kind of tense situations with their family. Um, and and wanting to kind of control it and control their reaction, the other person's reactions. I'm like, you can't do that. That's not how it works. Um, yeah, they were both so relatable and I'm vulnerable with each other and with us. Um, that was really helpful. I think they gave us a really good example of rooted friendship too, as we're talking and thinking about finding friends. Um, They've known each other a long time, so that helps. They had some nice foundation. Um, but you know, they're not like they live in different places and um, they're not getting to spend that much time together. Um, yeah, um, Ruth, I was also really blessed by them letting us peek in uh, at their conversation. Um, yeah, and, and dang, that piece about like the ways that, you know, Colleen felt ambition to be a great athlete but it wasn't until she kind of started listening for God and loving others that she played her best. Um, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, she's in the UD Hall of Fame. That's a big deal. It's pretty cool. Yeah, how can we practice checking in with emotions? Oh man, like how do we even, we have to even practice like slowing down enough to remember to check in with our emotions. Um, that's, I think probably a really good place where friends can help us um, slow down and think about that. They can ask us good questions. Um, yeah, how do we just, I think practice, right? The more we practice this checking in, uh, the, the more we'll get used to doing it. Um, we'll, we'll notice, hey, this is maybe a check-in moment, right? And I know like, I'm never gonna, I'm, I'm never gonna be perfect or jump to it. I'm always gonna need somebody to be like, let's check in <laughs> or how are you checking in to kind of stop me? I, I, I can move fast and that uh, speed can sometimes barrel over others and even myself. Um, yeah, how do we slow down, amen. Amen. Well, I'm grateful to be here with you all and trying to learn to do some of this together this summer. Um, so this this week, oh, um, there was one other thing I wanted to share that Colleen said, and um, she said something about like 
uh, when she started sharing with other people the power of vulnerability, like she had this moment of realizing, oh, I'm not the only one, or I thought I was the only one. Um, and I I've been in that place, I don't know about you guys, but just where I felt like lonely or disconnected from others because I kind of get into this mindset of like, oh, I think I'm the only one that feels this way, or I'm the only one that doesn't have close friends. Um, I'm the only one that's that's not, you know, having people ask me about the check-ins. Um, but realizing that there's other people in that same place is such a great gift. Um, so this week, this is gonna be what we practice. We're gonna practice checking in. Uh, we'll get a link in a minute <clears throat> in the chat uh, to practice um, that kind of guides through a really simple practice of checking in. Um, and um, you can walk through it on your own. You can walk through it with your rooted friend. You can walk through it with anybody, really. You can invite others, uh, roommates, housemates, family members, uh, coworkers um, to join you in, in doing the check-in. Um, the other thing that later this week that will be available on our Instagram um, is something called the examine. Um, shout out to our Loyola folks uh, who are very familiar uh, with the examine that was created um, in the 16th century by St. Ignatius of Loyola. Um, and it's another uh, practice of, um, it, sometimes, you know, the check-in is like, how am I feeling, right? Like, what's my emotion? And sometimes we can't even quite access that. So the examine asks a few more questions along the way um, and, que and questions that help us consider like, where did we feel close to God today? And where did we feel far from God today? Um, so I, I think the two disciplines really can go hand in hand. They're not at odds with each other. They're both really helpful. So you'll see the examine um, this week on Instagram. So make sure you're following us. And um, Kate, if you could post the, um, the check-in exercise in the chat, that'd be great. Thanks. So next week when we join together, we'll take a couple minutes and, and we'll do a check-in about the check-in. <laughs> so, uh, so come ready to share about how that goes for you. And um, if you shared if you shared the check-in with anybody. Um, so we might even have a little bit of time to, to unmute and share a story or two from you all. Um, but now I would like to introduce you to my friend, John Hachavar. Um, John is someone who I am continually learning uh, justice work from, but also what it means to be spiritually mature. Um, he is a spiritually mature human who's able to kind of bring his whole heart and self uh, to conversations, to interactions, and to others um, in a way that's not controlling, that's really open to listening for the ambitions that God has for us. So welcome, John. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Hey. I'd like to share a couple of moments and, uh, and then pray uh, in light of what we've heard. I was struck by several things, but two scriptures came to mind. One, uh, a prayer of the psalmist, where the psalmist cries out to God, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. And, uh, and then a, a desire that Paul has, the apostle Paul has for the people he's working in a discipleship relationship with, in Romans, he says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself in so sober judgment. And my translation is, Lord, help me be honest with myself. Help me understand what's going on in me. Know me, Lord, and search me and help me be honest with myself. And uh, it seems like part of true humility is just being honest with myself, uh, having sober judgment about who I am. Uh, I am thankful for a friend, it's my wife, Nina. We've been married over 40 years and she has a much quicker understanding of my emotions than I. She looks at me and said, John, what's going on with you? I said, I don't know, not much. I said, your face isn't saying that. I now carry around a two page list of emotions that I look at and said, I, where, what's one of these words? are now helping me identify where I am. I am a slow learner. I need help. And just to understand, to be honest with myself, so that one, I can be honest with my wife and I can be honest with God, and then be able to do, as Colleen said, uh, that to be deeply rooted in what God has for me. 
I'm taken back time and time again to Micah 6, 8, that God's desires for me is to act justly, to, to do kindness, and to seek God's desires for me to be humble before the Lord. Uh, may this evening help us all grow and how God wants us to grow in being aware of who we are and what God desires for us. True ambition, knowing God's desires for us. And that may God deeply root it in his desires and his love, his kindness, his mercy, and his justice, that we may live that out in relationships. Let us pray. Lord, help us search us and know us. Help us to know our hearts. Help us to be honest with you and others. Help us find somebody we can check in with. Help us to pay attention to what's going on in our lives, what we're experiencing in our feelings. Help us to let you set our ambition. Lord, we ask that you would renew us, give us a right understanding of ourselves, renew our minds that we may gra grasp the heights of your plans for us and seek after your desires. Help us to rely on you, Holy Spirit, to change us, to develop us, to grow us, to transform us, to be the people you want us to be, that we may uh, act justly, uh, live out kindness, and to seek our desires before you. Amen. Thanks, John. Appreciate you sharing that word with us and praying for us. We're gonna head into our breakout spaces now to debrief us a little bit. Um, you might even get a little practice with the check-in if you want. So if you didn't click on those links yet, go ahead and get them. I think you'll still have them available in your breakout room. Uh, but it's really great to be with you all tonight and um, blessings as you debrief for a little bit together.